Amen. <laughs> I, uh, I am constantly humbled by the word of God. I am amazed at the working of the Spirit of Christ, I am equally
shocked at how the devil works. I thought that it would be necessary in a series like this to not just talk about Christ, but to allow you to understand something of the working of the enemy. And I thought I would talk about that tonight. <laughs> I, I, I am amazed because I, I am amazed because I have not written the sermon. I have not jotted any notes down. I have not spoken to anybody. Not even my wife. And incidentally, I did not even read anything on the subject. I have not done any of that. All through today. Most of the time, I, I haven't read anything on the topic. So I haven't reviewed anything. Not even a Bible text on the subject. And yet, I had purpose in my mind that I'm going to talk to you about the demon within. And I am amazed that the devil can preempt me. <laughs> you know that one preacher, Pastor Francis, nice to see you. <laughs> I had to fast at that verse again. I am amazed that the devil can do that. Even if you don't do anything, he can... It's that subtle that he can almost guess what you're coming with. <laughs> and, and so try to, um, to thwart the plan of the Holy Spirit. But I can assure you, brethren, God is still in charge. I came tonight to let you know that there is nothing to fear from the enemy. I want us to read a passage of scripture from Mark chapter 5 as we look at the demon within. We read together, please, from verse 1. Mark chapter 5 from verse 1. And they came over and to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains. And in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. All is amazed by the fact that people possessed with the devil always come to worship. Sooner or later, they find themselves in church. <laughs> come and worship. And cried with a loud voice and said, disturbing the service, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Have you, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. Rebuking Jesus. <laughs> My God. For he said, that is Jesus said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, 
My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. The rest of the story is sweet. I don't think we're going to go into it. Now, there was near the, unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them, and so forth. The demon within. It is necessary that we take a break from our natural trend that we have been going through. Detailed textual exposition one after another. And take a look at some of the realities that now face us. Things that we have to live with day by day. And this week, as we wind down, we will be dealing with some of these practical things and some that we believe is of particular importance to us. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that there is another world surrounding us. A world that is beyond our senses. We cannot see it, we cannot hear it, we cannot apprehend it, we cannot test it with our instruments, but it is as real as the world in which we live. I was reading Popular Science magazine just recently and uh, there was a, an article concerning dark matter. And I was interested in that. And so I began reading about dark matter. The scientist concludes that 90% of the matter that exists in our galaxy is dark matter. And in reading the article, they said the same thing that I just said. They said, you cannot see it, you cannot touch it, you cannot taste it. They said, none of our instruments can measure it. But they said, we know that it exists and that it's all around us. And they said, we recognize now that there are planets and star systems make up of dark matter that is in our Milky Way galaxy. And a lot of them, they said, are giant stars and giant planets. And they said, we know that they exist because they are influencing the material universe. They said, though we can't see it nor touch it, we can observe the influence upon us. And I said to myself, sounds like the scientist turning preacher. <laughs> But there is a spiritual world. Yesterday evening, for those of you who were at Bible class, we talk about the Holy Spirit. And um, I should tell you something that I missed out in that um, presentation. What I did not tell you is that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And uh, as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned, you can't see him or touch him or smell him or taste him. You can't even feel him. And when people said that I feel the Spirit, that is a misapprehension. You can't feel the Holy Spirit. You can't feel spiritual things physically. It's an impossibility. <laughs> But there is this world that is here around us and it's peopled with spiritual entities, spirit beings. And they're all around us. They are here everywhere. And I came to tell you that the Bible is very clear about this spiritual world and it is real. Demons are abroad in the land and angels surround us. And even in our worship service tonight, they are present. Angels of God are here. You can't see them. 
You can't apprehend them, but I can tell you, brethren, even though you can't smell it or sense it, or you can't even apprehend it physically or mentally, I can tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit is here, that there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it is the presence of the Lord. In the Bible, particularly during the life and times of Christ, spiritual entities, demons, acted up mightily. There's something about Jesus that rose Satan to action. <coughs> you start to, to draw closer to Jesus and the devil begins to act up. You, you can go about church and go about your life business as usual normally and nothing happened but the moment we start a revival like this and the moment you decide to attend and the moment you decide to shape up and the moment you decide to give your heart to God and the instant you decide to turn over to Jesus all hell break loose that's how it works the demon within. In order to help you to understand something of the nature and the activity of these unclean spirits, I present to you one story from the life of Christ. Uh, I, I should probably give you two to give you a more comprehensive thing, but in a short time, I guess one can do. I give you one story. And that is this experience in Mark chapter 5. Of Jesus and this demoniac at gatherings. The man was there. Possessed with devil. The Bible said and we read it that he was in the tombs. Living in the region of death. I wondered about this man when I first came across the story years ago and I did some reading on him. Not a lot of research, but I at least read Sister White because I love Sister White. <laughs> She's kind of my favorite author, you understand? So I read, I read these half ages on him and I read what she has to say and, and I concur with her conclusions. She said the man was a noble man in society. He was a good person. He was a man attending church. But she said, by little by little, by giving countenance and way to the devil, by allowing the devil to come into his life and playing around with the devil, little by little, the devil got a hold of him. There's something else I could tell you from Sister White since we're talking about Sister White. You like Sister White? Incidentally, I didn't ask you guys. Um, I should have um, done that lest you throw me out of church. <laughs> or I probably should have presented a message on Sister White before I start talking about her like this. But you know, Sister White wrote in Prophets and Kings, page 62, she said, the devil perverts us gradually, almost imperceptibly. She said, no one comes to sudden ruin. It happens gradually. <clears throat> there is something about the devil. The devil and the Lord, they work differently. Did you know that? God operates suddenly, but the devil perverts gradually no one comes to sudden ruin it happens gradually because that's how the devil works the devil will never work suddenly you will not suddenly find yourself falling from grace and suddenly you're in the devil's camp and it happens gradually little by little the devil stop you from coming worship tonight or first of all sometimes he causes you to start coming a little late <laughs> then he allows you to skip out one little study and then another gradually almost imperceptibly so that when he's drawing you away you don't even realize that you're going on the devil's camp until one day you wake up and realize you stop studying your bible you stop attending prior meeting you stop going on missionary activity one day you wake up and realize that the things of god has no taste to you again 
It happens gradually. And, and if, if you come to a revival like this, you perk up and you say, how did I get so far in my walk with God? It was just the other day that I was a hot person in church doing everything. Well, the devil perverts you gradually. But you know, she also said, when God works, he's so anxious to save. He works suddenly. Will you say amen out there? I want you to understand that even though the devil might gradually draw you away, yet God can restore you suddenly. Will you say amen out there? Yes, you might go on afar off, but tonight suddenly it will happen to you. Suddenly the Spirit of God can touch you and draw you and wash you and restore you suddenly. That's how God works. What that means then is that you don't have to leave here as you came. You can come dirty, but go away clean. You can come crooked, but go away straight. You can come perverted and go away righteous, and it can happen suddenly. <laughs> but the devil perverts gradually. And so he got... He got this man on his side, little by little. Until finally, the man finds himself among the tombs. Dwelling among the tombs. So he got him out of the city. You know, one of the devil's plan, and I can tell you all the devil's technique. The devil's technique is simple. When he wants to catch a man, the first thing that he does to you is to separate you. Separate you from your friends. Separate you from the church. Separate you from the word of God. Separate you. This man was separated from his family. Separated from everybody. He was out in the tomb. He was alone in the hills. He was separated from everybody. In, in fact, um, he had a friend out there. I didn't intend to talk about his friend, but I can tell you. He had a friend out there because in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew speaks of the same story. And Matthew mentions two men. <laughs> Pastor, two men. But Mark talks about one. No, there, it's not that there's a disparity between Matthew and Luke because Mark says it's one and Luke said it's two. It, it, it's just uh, that Mark, Mark said it's one and Matthew said it's two. But you know, the, the situation is Matthew is writing about everything that occurred. Mark was writing about the one who was particularly dangerous and deadly. This one was just so outstanding that Mark forget about his friend. <laughs> this is the dangerous one. This one was so possessed by devil and he was so mighty and he was so aggressive and terrible that Mark said, no, he's one man. <laughs> but what about the other one? Mark said, forget him. He's half out. <laughs> and so he had a, man, a companion in crime. Uh, but, but he was more terrible than him. He was more dangerous. And I want you to notice what the devil does. The devil separates the man. And whenever you begin to succumb to the enemy, you find yourself separated from worship, separated from the things of God. He wants to have you alone. And notice he's living, I mean, he's surrounded himself by death. He moves away from everything that would bring life and light, from everything that can remind him of the good things of life. He separated himself from it all because there is a demon within. Whenever you find yourself in a condition where you want to stay away from where light is, stay away from where the truth is, stay away from the church of God, from the word of God. When you find yourself want to stay away from your family and stay away from the pastor and stay away from Christian friends and you want to surround yourself only with those things that cause death. He was out in the tomb. Where he was, there was just death everywhere. Everywhere there was reminder of death. Everywhere he's looking, it was just dead things that he, he surrounds himself with. He walked in the midst of death in the day. And in the night, he slept with death. Death surrounded him. Nothing reminded him of hope or joy or peace. He was possessed by devil. He had a demon within When the devil 
comes around, that's what the devil wants. He takes away everything that will remind you of light and remind you of truth and remind you of life. And he, he wants you out in the tombs. Then the Bible talks about him and the Bible said his condition, the condition of this demoniac is of such that it said, and no man, verse 3, could bind him. No, not with chains. No man could bind him. It's a sign of demon possession. It's a sign that the devil has control of your life when you are in a position where no man can bind you. When you're in a position where you reach a stage where you say, nobody can test me, nobody can bind me. You break out of those chains and out of those ropes and, and God can't bind you. The Ten Commandments is supposed to be a shackle binding you and dragging you in the way of righteousness. But when you're possessed by devil, you break out of those commandments. God said, thou shall not steal. But you say, I go away from that. And you take anything you want. Thou shall not kill. But you say, I man, shoot man. Because you break out of that you break every shackles no man could bind him it's a sign that the devil is in your life it's a sign that the demons are taking control of you when you reach a place where the law of god doesn't matter to you the sabbath doesn't matter to you anymore church worship can't bind you when you get to the place where you decide that the church board can't test me i don't listen to what church board say anymore i break free from church board and i break free from the shackles of the pastor and not even the conference can constrain me don't tell me about the president i don't follow that man you break out of the way it's a sign that there is a demon within no man could bind him uh, no not with chains uh, and, and the, the, the gospel writer mark I, I like the way he writes because he gives us reason for his words he said here is why he said because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains. Verse 4. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. So it's not that they didn't try. When he said no man could bind him. Ah, yes, yes, yes. The devil is in your life. You recognize there's a demon in your life. When the brethren often bound you and come to you and wrap you around with the word of God and shackle you with prayer, but you break out of the prayer and out of the shackles and out of all the things of God. When you find yourself mightier and stronger than the church of God, it's a sign that there is a demon within. You say, how bad is it, Pastor? Well, I'll tell you how bad. The Bible said, not only that he often break it, he said, neither could any man tame him. <laughs> he was now a wild man he reached a place where no man can calm him down he reached a point where not even the pastor can talk to him again he said Cho, me, me, me born bible i'm a born church i'm a born pastor he said he reached a place where he can no longer be controlled he reached a place where he comes to church he say what he want he march up to the altar he run through the place and no matter how you try to keep him calm and quiet he is beyond all of that no man could tame him. There is a demon within. And the Bible talks about this man. It said, and always, notice his lifestyle, please. Always, night and day, always or often, that's all the time. He was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself. A man possessed with devil. This is how the devil operates in your life. Always. This is his normal activity in the days. He's in the mountains and in the tombs. He's crying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said, I hate everybody. I hate but, but he's cutting himself. He, he has sharp rocks. <laughs> himself he has knife and he's cutting and stabbing but it's himself he's hurting but he's hurting himself 
you, you, you need to understand that when a man is possessed with devil, you, you don't need to be afraid of him. That his greatest enemy is himself. It's not you that he hates so much, he hates himself. It's not his children, he's hurting so much, he's himself. I hate you, I hate you. And he's crying all over, but the man is possessed. When you find yourself in a condition where you can't stick yourself, you can't tolerate yourself, everything you do is to hurt yourself. He's a man. Man, stop hurting yourself. When you decide not to come to the altar and give your heart to God, you're not hurting Jesus, you're hurting yourself. When you decide not to read your Bible and pray to God, it's not God you're hurting, you're hurting yourself. <laughs> Sin ultimately hurts the sinner. What, what, I, I was impressed years ago in reading a text in my Bible where it said, Consider him who endured such great contradictions of sinners against themselves. Sin hurt the sinner more than anybody else. But he's crying! And he's cutting himself. He recognizes that something is wrong, but he can't do anything about it. He recognizes that he's not in control of his actions anymore. He recognizes that things are bad, but there's nothing he can do. He recognizes that he needs to change his life and need to go somewhere else. I don't need to stay in this company with this man here in this tomb. I need to go home. I need to do something. But he can't do anything about it. So he's cutting himself and and hurting himself it is a sign that there is a demon within but, uh, but, uh, but one of the fascinating thing about being controlled by the devil is that whenever the devil take over your life God will never allow the devil to control you without giving you an opportunity to come out and break free and so while he was there cutting himself and in the tomb one day Jesus came by <laughs> really you say amen out there one day Jesus comes by <laughs> touch somebody beside you and tell them Jesus is going to do something yes Jesus is going to do something touch somebody else and tell them Jesus is going to do something you know as long as Jesus comes by you know that my God is going to work mightily really you say amen out there touch somebody else and tell them he's talking about about Jesus. Yes, I'm talking about Jesus. My burden bearer, my heavy load cheerer, my heart fixer, my mind regulator. And Jesus, the demon tamer, the Satan killer, the sin cleanser. Jesus! Came by. And you know, sometimes Jesus, Jesus doesn't have to do anything except pass through. When, when he saw Jesus the Bible said that when he, he saw Jesus verse 8 afar off he ran it's apparent that when this man said Jesus he's controlled by devil he's possessed by unclean spirit but when he saw Jesus afar off Somehow we muster some courage to try to run to Jesus for deliverance because he recognized that the spirits that is controlling his life were afraid of Jesus. And so he's trying to run to Jesus. So he's mustering everything in the little will that he has left to run to Jesus. But the Bible said that he ran and worshipped him. He ran and do what? I don't know how bad your condition is tonight. But as long as you decide to worship God, I can tell you, you can worship your problems away. I can tell you that if you really worship my God in spirit and in truth, everything is going to be different. You, are, you have never worshipped God and leave worship the same. 
The Bible said he came and worshipped God. He, he came and worshipped Jesus. But, but, but you see, his worship was not like our liturgy that we are going through. His worship was, was simply a man running and, and falling down before Jesus. <laughs> he didn't get through any of the forms that we have. He couldn't do anything. He just threw himself to the ground. And the Bible said, and he cried with a loud voice. Listen to this now. And cried with a loud voice. Verse 7. And said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Can you imagine that? The man is in church. He comes to worship God. But like the brother that is, was here a while ago, he, he began to curse God. He opened his mouth. He wants to worship. He opened his mouth. But when he opened his mouth to cry for help and mercy, what come out is curses. He find himself cursing God. What have I to do with you, Jesus? I have nothing to do with you, Jesus. Not at all, but I got to do with you. The demon is within. You know that you are controlled by the devil when your mouth starts start to say things where you don't want it to say. You know that you are in trouble. My, my, my sister, you know that the devil is in control of your life when you can no longer control your body. Your hand have a mind of its own and your feet. You know that you are in trouble, my brother. That the devil is inside when you find your hand going some places you don't want it to go and start touch things where you don't want it to touch. You're saying, no hand, no, no, go there. But the hand is moving by it. You know you are in trouble, man. You're in trouble when you leave church and you, you, you turn your thing for go home and you're heading towards your yard where you find the vehicle going to a different house and a different bedroom. Man, you're in trouble. You need to cry out to Jesus when that is your case. When, 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 you, when your mind is saying one thing but your body is doing another, it is a sign that there is a demon within and let me tell you, brethren, you'll be amazed what is happening even to church people. Even church people are becoming controlled by demons and devils. Even church people today are not having a mind of their own. They are just coming to church, but everything else is the devil in control. Some people will leave church right now to go home to curse their husband and curse them kids and, and curse them wife and, and coming from curse but coming with a spirit of wickedness and a, a demonic satanic spirit. There is a devil within. I'm not sure who I came here to talk to but I came here to tell somebody you need to get the devil out of your life. Uh, you need a deliverance from my God. I come here to tell you that you need to give your heart to Jesus and you. You need to surrender everything to Jesus and get a word from God. You need a word to free you from the shackles that you're under. You, you have been saying things and going places and doing things and eating things that you know is not right and you can't stop because there is a demon within he's worshipping but he's cursing God at the same time what have I to do with you Jesus your son of the most high God have you come to torment me Matthew adds before the time for Jesus, I love Jesus. Oh, somebody lift your hand and praise the Lord. You know, you know, I love Jesus. I, I love the way Jesus moves. I, I love the way Jesus operates. I, I love the way Jesus operates. This man is there, but, but, but there is something about God that you should understand. God judges motives and spirits, and, and he's able to read the inner intent of the heart. And so even though this man is cursing outside, Jesus read the yearning that is inside for deliverance. Will you say amen out there. Why, if this man was in this congregation tonight, some of you would escort him outside and throw him out. As long as he said, I have nothing to do with Adventists and I've done, you just get rid of him. But Jesus recognized that this man is hurting and yearning for deliverance. He recognized 
that it's the devil talking. And so Jesus stopped talking to the man and started talking to the familiar spirit. Jesus recognized demons and any guys and it doesn't matter how the demon come, dressed up nice and looking pretty. Jesus still recognized Satan and rebuke him. It doesn't matter what he wears or what titles the demons have or how educated the demons come and how polished they seem. See, God still recognized that this is a polished instrument in the hands of the devil and he will rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Jesus looked at the man. But he's not talking to the man anymore. He's talking to the devil. <coughs> Jesus recognized that the man is not driving the vehicle. Jesus recognizes somebody else at the steering wheel. And so Jesus looked at him and Jesus said, Come out of him, you unclean spirit. That word of Jesus. You talk about a word of deliverance. There is one right there. I don't know why you came here, but I came here tonight to speak a word of deliverance to you so that you will never be the same again. You talk about a word of deliverance. You don't need anything over and above that. The word of God is mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. I came here to tell you that all you need is a word from Jesus. Come out of him, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? <laughs> what is your name? Because oftentimes for you to get deliverance, you need to know what you are delivered from. One of the problems we have is too many people come to ask for prayer, but they don't know what they want the prayer for. They don't know what they need deliverance from. You need to know your exact condition. You need to know what kind of devil that you have. You need to understand that you have a pornographic satanic devil, that you have a homosexual demon in your life. You need to be able to call the demon by name so that when he disappears, you know he's gone forever. What is your name? And he, he, he did not say to the Lord, well, I am Pastor Clark. Lord, so that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking about real you. The you that nobody knows when you're at church. The other you I'm talking to. What is your name? What is that devil that have you in its grip? What, what, what is the name of that demon that have you up and down the place? And that's when the devil responded to Jesus, My name is Legion. For we are many. Legion. For we are many. You know, the Bible tried to lift the veil of the spiritual world to give us a glimpse of what goes on in there. And if you're really a reader of scripture, you will mark several things about the spiritual world. The Bible speaks and the theologians for years have designated certain order of spiritual entities. The Bible speaks of principalities and powers and thrones and dominions and, and, and theologians try to separate them all because not every devil is the same devil. <laughs> there are devils that are greater than devils. <laughs> In fact, I told you I read about Sister White and that. You want to hear what Sister White said? She said that when the angels sin. There, there were some of them who, when God cast them out of heaven, where there, there were some who, who, who got so depressed and repressed because they lost their station in heaven. She said they got crazy. And so you have a lot of crazy demons running around. They're, they're crazy. And nobody can control them, not even Satan, because they're crazy. It looks like oh, you have madman around the place. You have mad devil. They're, they're mad all about the place. And they come around and they will fool around you a little bit. But, but they're crazy, you understand. And if you just say a little something, they're up and gone because they're crazy. They will fool around you. But if you just say, Jesus, they must run gone. <laughs> crazy devil. 
But you need to understand that Satan's kingdom is very organized. Satan's kingdom is what? Very organized. Yes, it's organized. And, and, and so the devil marked out his kingdoms into different territories and there are demons that are in control of groups of demons and demons who are controlled in control of territories that's why certain territories appear to be as they are because there are certain demons that control them and, and as you go up the ranks there are principalities and there are powers and then there are thrones and then there are dominions that controls entire sectors of planet earth there are certain band of demons. They are mere pen demons. They don't go anywhere else. They, they, they stay in mere pen. They don't leave this place. This is their turf. They have assignment to mere pen. And, 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 and that's why when you come to mere pen, people will tell you, I'm not going to mere pen because when I go down there, there are certain spirits that are mere pen. That spirit, not they are man devil. And the Lackingstone is a mere pen devil. That is when you go mere pen, you find that kind of devil. And there's another kind of devil that is in Spanish town. And those demons demons lock down that region and then there's a downtown posse that lock down downtown and then there's a mandible devil that is more sedate and cerebral and more educated and you know and refined but when he locks down the university you need to understand that the devil has the, the demons assigned to different regions Not all demons are openly rebellious and aggressive. Some of them are extremely polished. <laughs> but the devil has them. And so, according to your temperament and your disposition, the devil has a demonic assignment cut out just for you. <laughs> Ellen White writes that, that the devil study you. He studies you. He observes where you go. He knows your likes and your dislikes. He knows your habits. He knows the kind of movies you watch and the kind of text that you send on WhatsApp. He studies you and then he send the right demon for you. <laughs> he said, don't worry. I have a guy cut out just for you. I have a girl over here cut out just for you. I have you locked down now. And the band, the posse of devils that control this man, he is now controlled by this posse. Call themselves Legion. For we are many. Legion, of course, as you know, is about 3,005 to about 6,000. I'm here, some people say, soldiers, whatever it is, is a whole heap of devil. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but I can tell you, it's a whole heap of devil that to control you. But you need to understand that this man was controlled by the entire posse. It's not that all the legions were all, 3,000 were there with him at that time. But what happened? Some of them come and kick him around and play with him. Then just throw him around to him, brethren, as a brethren take over. And then the brethren take over and deal with him. Then throw him to another one. And they were playing basketball with him. Bouncing him all over the place, dribbling him here and there. And flicking him over there and he finds himself at the control and mercy of devils who are you controlling this man we are the posse and you will observe that when Jesus is about to cast them out. Jesus. The only reason Jesus allowed the devil to talk is because Jesus wants us to understand that sometimes when you think it's one devil you have to deal with is a whole posse. Jesus wants you to understand that of your own power, you can't stand up to the demonic assignment of Satan. And let me tell you, brethren, it's not only demons assigned to, to, to territories. No. They are also assigned to families <laughs> and persons. Uh, there is a satanic assignment assigned to your family. And you will observe that there are certain families that, that, that certain devils seem to run through that family. <laughs> 
you will observe that certain families of the same devil coming down. Yes! Uh, yes, you got, yes, your great grandmother got pregnant when she was a teenager. And your mother got pregnant when she was a teenager. And you got pregnant when you were a teenager. And look at your daughter just reached 13. What is happening to her? It's a demonic assignment. And there are certain devils that run around certain families and there, there are certain particular sins that run in the family because the devil that is assigned to that family, this is the thing that he's using for years to control these people. For years to control the same family. Abraham tell a lie that him wife and him sister. His son Isaac go around the same thing. And look at what is happening now to Jacob. His son, the devil, is in the family. You have to learn to curse and break the demonic assignment. You need Jesus to loose you from the devil forever. You might think that I came here just, 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 just to preach a nice polished sermon. But I came here to bring deliverance to your home. And bring deliverance to your soul. And deliverance to your family. I came here to tell you that the demon that is within will get out. The, the, the demon recognized that he couldn't, they couldn't stand up before Christ. You know, the thing I love about Christ is that it doesn't even matter if it's one devil or 3,000 or 6,000 devil. It's Jesus used the same word to deal with them. Will you say amen out there? Oh, the, the demon was nervous. You notice he was nervous? Uh, when he realized Jesus was going to cast him out, <coughs> he said to Jesus, he said, don't send us out of the country. If so, wherever you send me, anyway. we send me anywhere, man. We even willing for going to swine. <laughs> Go deal with swine. Even swine we will deal. We don't worry about dealing with the hag. We deal with even hag. But not send me out of the country. You know why no one go out of the country? You know one go out of the country because the devil gave me assignment in that territory. And you know why Lucifer, Satan for come. I realize that him out of the turf. <laughs> Satan for come. I say, wait. You know your district. What are the <laughs> Man, he said, no, no, no. Whatever you do, just make sure I stay in the district. <laughs> this is the place that I have. This is where we perform for more ministry. Do not send us out. We have a good business going on here for a long time. Business is blooming well. We, we have control of almost everybody in the territory. Every one of them buying our wheels. Business sweet down here. Do not send us out. Because he realized that as long as he remain in the turf, even if he can left you a little while, he's going to come back. <laughs> because you and him still live in the same quarters. <laughs> That's how the devil works. The Bible said, Jesus said to them, and notice what Jesus did in getting the devil out. All Jesus did was to speak the word. You know, I believe there is more power in the word than we can ever imagine. Jesus just looked at him and said, Come out of him, you unclean spirit! That's all. And the key is over. You say, well, is that easy? Yes, when you're God, it's that easy. All God does is speak the word. You know, the Bible tells us that there is nothing more powerful than the word. It's the most powerful thing that the universe can conceive. In fact, the Bible is clear to tell us that the entire visible universe was created by the word. Both the seen and the unseen world came into being by this word. Psalm 33 verse 6 and 9 said, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood firm. The word of God has creative power. There is something about the word of God that when God uttered the word, the word has to do what God said.
in the book of Isaiah, the Lord said, talking about his word, giving us a glimpse at all this power in his word works. God said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper, preacher, in the thing where to I send it. Did you hear what God said? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not what? Return unto me void. It shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. I'm about to speak deliverance to you. I'm about to give you the method to deliver yourself, your family from every situation that you're ever entangled with. And by giving you that text, I have tapped into the secret recesses of how God's word works. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. You know, I didn't understand the text. I, I didn't understand the meaning of the text. I, I have gone through the text. I've looked at the text. I have meditated on the text for years and years and years. And I did not understand the text, Pastor, that verse, until, until the tsunami hit Indonesia. And I'm sitting in front of my television watching tsunami. And when I watch the tsunami, it, the text lick in my head and I say, Lord, I get it. Because I watch the tidal wave as it enters into the shore. Then it covers all these places, but it did no damage. It just covers them. Then I realize that when the water is going back to the sea, it holds on to everything. And everything that could be moved was moved. And it began to drag it back to the ocean. And when it began to drag cars and houses and people and everything back into the ocean. And then the word of God come to me. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. And I realize that what you need is the word of God. But the word of God goes out of his mouth. But the power is not when the word goes out. It's when the word is coming back to God. <laughs> you don't hear what I say. You need a word from God. But what you need is when you get the word from God, you need to send it back to God. You need to say, God, you say what is going on and when the word is going back to God God said it can't come back to me empty but it shall accomplish everything that I please demons will have to leave your life disease will have to disappear sin will have to be cleansed the Lord said as long as the word come back it has to accomplish that which I please it can't come back empty no way You need to start sending the word back to God. Yes, you know the word of God. But have you sent it back to God and say, Lord, you say, Lord, what is going on? And the word of God will accomplish it. The word of God will prosper. Nothing can stop the word of God. So the word went out. Come out of him. You unclean spirit and in vain the devil struggled to stay inside demons, legion struggle against the word the word grab a hold of legion every single one of them a legion is kicking and screaming and biting with all the satanic fury but legion can't stay because legion is fighting against the word it is this word that creates the universe this word that flings galaxies into space and island universes take their courses it is this word of God 
that creates everything that you and I see. And now some created intelligence can't stand up against the word. The word grab a hold of them. It's as though the word said to them, we can't leave you because God said, come out! And I can't go back to the master empty. I have to do what he said. And so the word just yanked the devils out of him. And Jesus said, now you can throw them in the the, the, in the in the swine. And I picture the demons as they come out of him. The word just throw them in the swine. And legion of devil just dropping into unclean spirit going into unclean animal. And God said, well, that is a good match. <laughs> this is now a good match. Isn't that right? Yes, the word was out. And the man was made whole from that same hour. I came here to tell you, you might come here oppressed, repressed, possessed by the devil. But I came here to tell you that the word of God is gone out. The word of God to you is come out of her sin and iniquity. Get out of her devil. Cleanse up the life. The word of God tonight. It's for your salvation. Salvation! Salvation is offered tonight. Not even the devil. I don't know what you're going through, but I came here to tell you that Jesus is the answer. I came here to tell you that God has a word especially designed for your condition. I came here to tell you that tonight... It's a night of victory. Tonight you're going to find things that has hold you in its grip for ages and decades broken. Tonight you're going to find demonic assignment of the enemy disintegrate. You're going to find out that, that, that the contract you have made with hell is now gone up in smoke. You're going to find tonight that my God is able touch somebody beside you and tell them he's able yes he's able it doesn't matter what you're going to he's able my god has the power he's able he's able he's able tonight i want to call you to deliverance i want to call you to a special deliverance tonight and i'm going to call you to this altar for you to be delivered Please stand where you are. You're here tonight. And the devil has been harassing you. You recognize there is a demon abroad in the land and he's harassing you. You say, Pastor, this sermon is for me. Yes, the devil is in my life. Every time I try to do good. Tonight, this is your message. I'm going to invite you to come to this altar. And I'm going to pray for you. This is not a general call, actually. This is for people who are going through hard times. Rough times. By the way, I should tell you, we have some unconverted people in our midst. We called you yesterday, and all you came to the altar by yourself. We didn't get to call the brethren. Tonight, we're going to call you to come back to. If you're not converted, come to the front. Those of you who are not converted, brethren, let them stand up before you. I'm going to pray a special prayer for them. Those of you who are especially harassed by the devil, come to the front too. If the devil has been harassing you and you're sure that there is a demonic assignment of the devil in your home, in your family, in your husband, in your children, if that is you, you need to come to this altar and I'm going to pray for you. Okay, I see one or two persons whispering to me that they step forward. No problem, God know you. The preacher might not know you. But the Lord knows. Uh, let us pray. Oh, Pastor Francis, come and pray one prayer. Two prayers we're praying. <laughs> yeah, man, we're going to give you deliverance. To <laughs> yeah, I have the preacher beside me. You have to have the men of God. Oh, let us pray.
And then he's going to pray for you. Oh Lord God and our Father, we come tonight, Lord, because the devil has been harassing us. We come here tonight, Lord, because it's not pretty. Oh Lord, when we leave church and when we go home, the devil is there. Lord, we recognize, Lord, that the devil is on our, in our homes and in our families and on our track. But tonight, in the name of Jesus, uh, we want a word of deliverance from you. Tonight, Lord, we come before the threefold power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And tonight, Lord, we want to hear your word. Come out, you unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus, we want the devil out of our hearts and out of our husband and out of our children and out of our jobs. Lord, we curse the demonic assignment of Satan. We ask tonight, Lord, that you will surround us with an aura of your love. We ask, Lord, that a force field of divine grace Lift up a standard against the enemy. I pray, Lord, for this sister who is especially harassed. We ask, Lord, that tonight you will free her. In the name of Jesus, uh, I rebuke the devil from her life and from her home and from her children. By the blood of Jesus, I sprinkle, Lord, everybody with the blood of Jesus as with the ashes of a red heifer. By the blood of Jesus tonight. We claim deliverance by the power of our Lord. By the power of his resurrection. We lift up a standard against the devil. Tonight, Lord, there are those here, Lord, who want to give their hearts to you. But the devil is holding them back. The devil is fabricating, manufacturing excuses. The devil is on their tracks. Tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the demonic assignment of Satan against every unconverted person in this building. By the name, blood of Jesus, we claim them for your kingdom. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. We claim righteousness for them in the name of Jesus. We ask tonight, Lord, that you will help them to exercise the faith that is necessary to bring about their salvation. Lord, we pray for brethren who come to this altar tonight. Because we have fallen from the first love. We have fallen from grace. Little by little, the devil has been on our tracks. But we come tonight, Lord, to restore the first love. To restore the pledge. Lord, as we look at this theme, Lord, transform me. We come for transformation. Lord, we were not always like this. We were not always this apathetic. We were not always this delinquent. We were not always we were bench warmers in church. Tonight, we shake off the shackles of the devil. We come for transformation. Transform me. We come for deliverance. Deliver me. We come, Lord, like this demoniac. Crying, crying for deliverance. We ask now, Lord, that the power of your Holy Spirit presence will be manifested in our lives and we pray that from this night forward, from this night, we will be so transformed that we'll be sharing the gospel with everybody we meet. We'll be so transformed that we'll be studying your word. We'll be so transformed that we'll be oft at prayer. We'll be so transformed that we'll be at the meeting every night. Give us the victory now, we pray, as we learn to send your word back to you for deliverance and sanctification. Guide us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pastor. Lord, we thank you for the deliverance that we have had tonight. We thank you that your words will not return to you void. 
We claim the victory in every area of our lives. We ask that you'll guard the very avenues to our souls. And may when we go back home tonight, our friends, our families, our spouses, our children will know that we have been delivered. And may we carry this spirit of deliverance, Heavenly Father, and speak it into our homes. And may we come rejoicing tomorrow because we have experienced new life in Jesus is our prayer in Jesus' name. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. May God be with you as you go. See you tomorrow night, same time, same place for another challenging message from the Lord.